Griffin and Mason and Monroe Railroad. Hi, I'm Bill Hodges, and we're here at the Lebanon and Monroe Railroad with Conductor Bob. Hey, how are you? Hey, welcome. Bob is the conductor on this great railroad. Rob, Bob, where does it go, and why do we have these Union troops here today? Well, once a year we do a Civil War reenactment, so we're going down to Camp Denison, and that's where we're going to see a couple Civil War skirmishes. But there's going to be a surprise on the train. There is. Yeah, you got to. I can't tell you what that's going to be, but there's going to. Something's going to happen, so just now, is, it, is this a Union train? Yeah, well, we're going to have, it'll start out with Confederate troops on board, but then I'm afraid. It will. Yeah. I'll just I'll, have to tell you, there's a, there's a train robbery. Now, what, I see people lined up to go on this train. How often does it run, and where does it go? We run almost every weekend, starting in the spring with Easter Bunny Express. We run all the way through to the North Pole Express. And most of our trips, we just go about five miles down the track, and we stop at what we call the Lebanon Mason Monroe Junction. Nice picnic area, big field down there. That's where we're going to have the Civil War battle today. That's where we hold all of our events. So when you're on a train like this, what, what year does it kind of, the train itself? Uh, it's a train to trip back in history because our... Uh, Passenger cars are from the 1930s. They were built by the Pullman Motor Company up in Chicago, 1930, and they were interurban commuter cars. They used to have the electric stuff on the top. Wow! So they could go one at a time, but they got rid of all that to reduce the weight, and now they just have to call them together. And our locomotives were built in 1950, so it's an old piece too. that we have some guards on the train today. I noticed some Union troops sitting out there. Are you part of that detachment? No, the troops are here because they have a payroll. There's a payroll on board, and they got troops guarding the payroll. Actually, I'm traveling by myself. I'm going to the New Haven Firearms Factory in uh, Connecticut. Uh, the Henry Repeating Arms. Oh, yes, I've heard of that. And I know a special letter from the president, Mr. Lincoln, to, uh, he wants to sign a contract for more of the weapons to be distributed in the Army. Chief. Are you you're going out there to see whether this is a good weapon or not, or are you an arms expert? Oh, my uh, president actually has tried it himself. He's really impressed by it. He's no stranger to a firearm, and he likes what he sees. And your name is? My name is Major Mays. Major Mays. All right. Nice to meet you, Major. Same here. Enjoy the train trip. So I'll just keep this under wraps. I don't want everybody to hear about this. I, I'll keep this quiet at least for a week or two. There, there's a lot of co Confederate copperheads in this area, and I don't want them to get word of what, what I'm carrying. All right. Thank you much. You're up. Now you're traveling to where, Mr. Farmer? Uh, I'm traveling on the train to uh, go grab some horses. Some horses? Yeah, bring them back from Kentucky uh, and uh, use them for my farm. Will you bring them back on the train or will you drive them up? Uh, we'll ride them up. Uh, them up. A little bit afraid during this Civil War that that might be a tough road? Well, that's why I got my sidearm here. And all these Union troops? Well, the Union troops are here to protect us, sir. All right. Thank you. And your name is? My name is uh, Tony. Tony.
Tony. Tony, nice to meet you. Now there's a carpet bagger, you can tell that by the fact you scared the carpet bagger. What would be the fancy construction this young one's got here? Secret spice. Is this an English or a French uh, prototype? Oh, you don't know. Uh, there's something mysterious about that. I can usually smell rebels, but they might have put the mask. I think he is a spy. Hey, Yank! I think he's got a spy here. He, he's writing things down here on this thing. Fuck! Yeah, on this little thing he's got, he's writing it down. I think, he, I think he's a spy. Well, thanks for the help. You're I heard you say that your uh, uh, brother was here on board. Well, I can look tell that's a trustworthy Yes, sir. Uh, he told me to keep it's awful strange. strange. He doesn't have an accent like that. Well, What's going on? We're running in Mason Railroad, and it appears to me we've got added security today. Yes, sir. My name is uh, Charles. I'm with the 35th OBI. I'm a private. Um, we're taking a load of payroll down to Camp Denison, and they put us on here for fear of some Confederate raiders. Are, are they up here? Or have been a thing that they're uh, doing? Morgan and his men have been uh, up and about, so uh, a few of them got away. They didn't capture them all up in Meigs County, so we're still uh, trying to keep them pinned down and keep them away from uh, the civilian population. How long have you been in the Army? Uh, since the Great War. I took a long walk with Winfield. Really? I've been in the military longer than most people have been in books. You know, a lot of people I see are conscripts, but you're actually a full-time soldier. Yes. Well, that's great. Thank you for being on the train today. I feel much secure. That would be a line for the south. Okay, we're going along. You can see here that this track doesn't get used a whole lot. I guess in Civil War times there wasn't a lot of traffic. And there's been some rumors that there might just be some revs somewhere along the way. And I don't know, but it appears there might be some kind of obstruction coming along the track or there's a problem because I'm hearing the soldiers start they to move. might have some trouble going on. Hey, I'm on down inside the track. Okay, lay on on that side. Nick, right here. What do you boys think is going to happen? I don't know. I think we got, I don't see an obstruction, but I'm just going to walk the boys down the trail a little bit just to make sure there ain't nothing. There are no reds out here, are there? I don't think there would be. I don't smell any. I don't smell none either. It appears that we've had a bit of trouble here. There's some significant hey, what's that? signs. Uh oh, 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 looks like, looks like we got an impasse here. Holy smoke. Got ribs coming out of the trees. Hey, 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 come back up there. Come back up there. Put them guns over here. We hear y'all got some money on this train. There's no money on this train. Hey, this is I don't train. believe that. There's no money on here. There's no uh, money. I've never believed this train. This train? My train. Okay. This word is a gentleman. You got women and children on there? Got lots of them. Y'all got, got shoes on? We've got Both enough for the war effort on there. Good enough. We, we take shoes. Well, you need them. Yep, we need them. Need lots of shoes. You'd look good in them high heels. Uh, Piers are going after the shoes on the train. Yep. I know you got money on that train. There is no money on the train. I keep telling you, we do not have money on this train. We, we are our just going to Fort Dass and just to do some recruiting. We have no money on this train. We believe that more than a Yankee lie. So, let's go. I'm an officer. You can trust me. Those are famous words. I've heard rumors of money on this train. Tricked again. Oh, thanks. Tricked again. I thought there was no money on this train. I'm a southern sympathizer. Ah. Oh. Oh. 
like the Rebs have the upper hand for a moment. Conductor is going to get back on. They're not paying any attention to me, so I guess I'm all right. Being being part of the news media, they're going to leave me alone. Uh -oh. One of the Yanks tried to hide. We yep. found him. Keep on going, old man. Keep on going. Oh, my. Uh, all the people had their hands up. They're all... Don't worry, folks. We won't be hurt. You know, we just want to come and get the bag. Looks like that. that don't, we're, we're not here to hurt anybody. We just want the bag up. So, so our money is okay. And our person is okay. That's right. We wouldn't be yeah. here to do that to you. Looks like that farmer and his son we saw earlier are actually copperheads. Nine and a half. I was in that one year. Just one year I was nine and a half. No. You know, when I was nine, I was working in the coal mine. Oh my goodness! That was very hard. Now, very hard. now we see what side he's really on. Look at that! Look at that belt! Look at that belt! Yes, sir. That's the CSA if I ever saw oh, one. Yes, sir. Uh, you, I think you can. You're just pulling my leg. Yeah. Who, who would that look like? You want to drop heads we heard about? That's your aunt? No, sir, I see that. I moved Marlin, the Great Escape right. 1 4 material, and he came over here and discovered another. Oh, so I'm so really so continuing sorry. my fight for uh, tomorrow, to right? Oh, sure, so you're, you're Irish by birth, and now you're in the Confederate Army. I know you were smoking. Yeah, I guess you could say it that way. We came over looking looking for something better, but we just found the exact same thing. Boat over there, why not find over now, here? I see, your, I see that you're in charge of this train engineer. Uh, you know, it's kind of strange back here in Civil War times to see a lady running the train. Is that because all the men are off fighting the war? Uh, they're out fighting the war, and I'm a southern sympathizer that infiltrated the north. Oh, so that's why you stopped this train and let those people on. Absolutely. Oh, you know, this could be kept and used in your trial. Remember, I think, no, that came later, didn't it? That's all right. Johnny Reb is going to triumph. Johnny Reb's going to triumph, huh? Yes. Three batters, which line for the main? Line for the main. Then we have a fellow over here who was the conductor. I'm Jim, hey, I'm Jim Carson. I'm the passenger conductor in charge. Uh, actually, I report to Stephanie and the other conductors report to me. And what did you think when you saw all these Confederate troops coming out of the woods? I thought, oh no! Stinking rebels! We should Probably have kept from Texas. <laughs> So well, I got an engineer who's a southern sympathizer and a head conductor who's a staunch blue belly. I'll have to straighten her out. I'll take care of that later. Well, we're away for a while, but it looks like the Rebs still have control of the car. One at each end. Well, it appears everybody's quick panicking. They're in good shape. Well, the Rebs have moved us all out of the train. I don't know what's going to happen here, but as you can see, people are kind of milling around, and they got some seats. That was kind of nice of them to have for us. I guess we'll just have to sit here and tell somebody from the train I tells think we're us. I have enough shade for everybody if you choose. Let, let them know how much you enjoyed it. Comments from our passengers have always been excellent. This, this is one of my two favorite events we do all year. Is this one? This is going back to Richmond, Virginia. Make sure we get our house. We'll do that. Was it easy trying to smoke all these guns on there with all those bloody yanks in there? <laughs>
Looks to me like the Union's come back, trying to take some more of their property back. Here comes the Union way over the hill. on the train with us. He said his brother was a blue belly. taking care of the people. You might have noticed him on the train where he had the blood in his mouth. A saber duel two against one. I 
time for the surrender. The money's been retrieved. And the passengers are all going to be released. What do we want to do in a, in a couple of minutes here? Have a word of silence uh, for all the veterans, past, present, and, and future, uh, that have sacrificed their lives and through their dedication and the uh, military that they've preserved this country into what it is today to keep the freedoms that we have. Uh, I'm the event coordinator for this thing, and uh, again, and uh, uh, we should be back next year also to have this thing again, so keep watching on these guys' website, uh, LM and M Ranch. Um, we've enjoyed it. So at this time, we'd like to have a word of silence. Over 12, with the parental permission, I'll let you shoot my gun. By the way, to be in the Civil War, you had to have at least two teeth, opposing teeth, because you had to be able to tear the cartridge. The other thing is you had to have at least three out of these five, because you had to be able to hold the weapon, fire the, fire the thing, and pull the hammer back. That's a sissy one. In here. Burn the Now, say what? First thing, I, first thing I want you to do is this. Don't put your finger on the trigger. Let me call out. Uh, Fire in a hole, and then I'll let you fire. All right. Ready? Fire in a hole. Bob on a horse. Yeah, here That's we are. Something you won't see very That's often. Kind of an unusual Civil War outfit. Uh, and, and there really isn't anybody leading the horse either. That's a. Well, oh, wait a minute. There, there's the direction Look, there are two I'm horses used to. rear ends. Yeah. Right. Come on. You know, during the battles, it was sad because brothers were against brothers all throughout the Civil War, and this was no different. We have the O'Reilly brothers, both from Ireland, of the same parents. And here they are, one wearing a gray uniform and the other wearing blue. Now, why is it you're wearing the blue uniform? Because when I first got on the ship, come to America, I seen the Union Army, and they're recruiting people. And I said, well, I think I'll join the Union. I went there and joined the Union with them. So this is really, you're in the Army now for the same reason many young people are joining the Army today? Yes. It was three squares and a job. It was a job. I got a place to stay and a place to live and uh, free wow. food. <laughs> well, you know, I, I was talking with the other O'Reilly brother here, Sean. Sean, why is it that you joined the Gray? Because there certainly were no Gray recruiters standing yes. there when you got off the boat. Uh, no, there definitely yeah, wasn't. Blue. Um, I think it was mostly because I, especially seeing how things were in Ireland way back uh, before we came over. Yeah, the government told you what you could could do and what you could not do. It regulated, you know, who you could associate with, who you could trade with. Um, and I think that's mainly why I went, is because I don't think anybody has the right to tell me who I am, who I'm not allowed to, so to, to associate with. Um, I don't believe that the government should be able to pass laws over people without their consent, if they feel that it is... Um, not just that they should um, not have to adhere to it. Rise up. Well, there you have it. Two different people of the same family, the O'Reilly brothers, Sean and his brother, one in gray, one in blue. One, it was a great job. He could go to the army, get three squares, and the other, because he just felt that he needed an Stop opportunity praying. to have a country that was destiny for himself rather than the government telling him how to do it.
We see that today, and unfortunately, we may see these two brothers on a battlefield facing each other. Thank you, gentlemen, for your service on both sides. This is something you're not going to see very often. We've got Union Cavalry here. Now, did they issue you your horses, or did you have to bring your own? Well, the Federal, they issued the horses. The Confederates had to bring their own, but the Federal, they issued. So if you were a Confederate and you didn't have a horse, you walked? Right. You became infantry. Uh, they gave you 30 days to find another horse if your horse was killed or injured in battle and couldn't be used. Really? But with the Federals, they supplied your horse. If you lost it, they just supplied you another one. Well, gentlemen, thank you for your reenactment. I saw you as the medic. Yes. Is that what you, you're going to have? Speak up as loud as you can because i got all this other room to cover. On the field of battle, we saw you as the medic. That's correct. Do you do this regularly? Uh, frequently, but not regularly. My normal reenactment is Confederate Marine Corps. Confederate Marine Corps? Yes, sir. And you're a Marine Corps medic in the, in the Confederate no, Army? No, the Marines never had medical. They used Navy. Same as today. Okay. Marines have never had